Hello, everyone. Let's start our today's discussion. I hope you all remember that in previous class, we were discussing basic income tax calculation of individuals. Let's take a quick review of previous classes, and then we'll start our today's discussion. We started discussion with the format of basic income tax return. In individuals, the incomes are divided in three heads, non-saving, saving, and dividend. The reason being that UK tax department has defined different tax rates for each of the head. Non-saving income is the normal income head, which include all incomes except interest income, which is classified as saving income, and dividends, which are classified in their own head of dividend income. Okay, we discussed that how we classify the income in these three heads, and we arrive at the value of total income. Then we adjust the personal allowance of £12,570 to arrive at the value of taxable income. Once done with the basic format of the income tax return, we introduce the tax rates for non-saving income. Up till 37,700, it is basic rate mine, and the tax rate of non-saving income is 20%. From 37,700 to 150,000, it's higher rate bank, and the rate of tax is 40%. And after 150,000, it's additional rate bank, and the rate of tax increases to 45%. Okay. Once done with this basic concept, we did two practice questions. By now, you all know that my approach is to introduce a concept, we discuss its theory, and then we do the practice questions so that the calculation procedure, the method gets clear in your mind. Okay? Then we introduce the concept of real estate investment trust. These are the mutual funds which raise investment from the public and they invest the funds in real estate, the property market. They earn from capital gains and rental income. Okay, the income earned by REIT is distributed to the investors. It is treated as a non-saving income for an investor and withholding tax. The advanced tax is 20%. Okay, the advanced tax is deducted at source. It is adjustable in your final tax library. Okay, we did two practice questions in this regard, which gave us clarity on the approach of real estate investment trust. Then we introduced the concept of dividend income, the profit distribution from companies. Dividend incomes have their own tax rates, 8.75%, 33.75%, and 39.35%. First 2000 is taxed at 0%. We discussed this and we did two practice questions in this regard also. Okay, then we introduced the concept of trust income. Trust is an incorporated body in which the donor gives the assets. Those assets are managed by the trustees for the benefit of beneficiary. Why the trust is created and the types of trust. We discussed all of these concepts in the previous class, and we did three practice questions in this regard. I hope you all remember, and you must have done revision. Okay? Now, in the today's class, our primary focus will be on interest income. But before introducing the concept of today's class, we'll do a practice question which relates to the concepts we studied in the previous class. The objective of doing this is to give you a review and a revision that what we have studied in the last class. Okay, I want you all to concentrate on it so that you people can have a better revision of the last class. Okay, now, Mr. J has following incomes for the year. Employment income is 26,000. Income received from IIT is 8,000. Now, we studied in the previous class that if the examiner is silent, we assume that IIP is from non-saving source, okay? We assume that the interest in possession trust is from non-saving source. And when it is from non-saving source, withholding tax will be 
20%. And since he is silent, so we will assume that the amount received is net. Net means that we need to gross it up. Let me repeat it again. Income received from IIP, 8,000. In IIB, it is very important to determine the source of the income. Because if the IIB comes from non-saving or saving source, we treat it as a non-saving income and withholding taxes 20%. Whereas if it is earned from dividend source, then in that case, the withholding tax is 8.75% and it is classified as dividend income. We have discussed all this in the previous class. If you have forgotten any of the rules, then you have the learning management system. You have the pre-recorded classes. You can revise it from there. If you have any query remaining after all this also, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number for further assistance. Income received from discretionary trust, it's 15,000. You all know that discretionary trust is always non-saving income. And in discretionary trust, the withholding tax is 45%. And since the examiner has not written net or gross, so we assume that it is net and withholding tax is already adjusted from it. And the last thing, dividend income is 20,000. Let's start doing the question and the things will get more clear. First of all, we will make two heads. One is non-saving and the second one is dividend. Okay, I want you all to concentrate on it. Employment income. Employment income is 26,000. It goes in head of non-saving. Okay, you all know that first step is to classify the income. Then we have interest in possession trust. Since the examiner is silent, we are assuming it as from non-saving source. Withholding tax is 20%, so we need to gross it up. 8,000 divided by 80% multiplied by 100%. Since 20% is the withholding, so what we have received is 80%. So when we gross it up, it is 10,000. Then we have income received from DT, 15,000. Now, 45% is the withholding tax. So we will gross it up, divide it by 55, multiply it by 100. Just think it logically. Because if 45% is the withhold, the advanced tax, so what you have received is just 55%. 15,000 divided by 55, multiplied by 100. So it's 27272. Okay? And at last, we have dividend income, and that is 20,000. I will repeat it again. Okay. First of all, we have employment income, 26,000. It goes in head of non saving. Income received from IIP, non saving source since nothing is written. Withholding tax is 20%, so we need to gross it up. Discretionary trust, 15,000. 45% is the withholding, so we gross it up, divide it by 55, multiply it by 100, and then we have dividend. Okay? Let's add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. Okay? Let's look at it carefully. 26,000, 10,000, 27,272. So it's 63,272. And dividend income is 20,000. Is it clear? Now we have personal allowance. The personal allowance is 12570. We'll adjust it so we'll arrive at the value of taxable income. Now, what is the taxable income? 63,272 minus 12570. So it's 50702, and this is 20,000. I will repeat it again. I want you all to concentrate on it. C, employment income 26,000, interesting possession trust. The examiner is silent, so we are assuming non saving tools, 20% withhold. 
divided by 80 multiplied by 100. Discretionary trust, non-saving, 45% is withhold. So divided by 55 multiplied by 100. And dividend goes in head of dividend. We'll add up all of them. So we get the total income. We adjust the personal allowance to get the taxable income. Is it clear? Now let's apply the tax. I want you all to concentrate on it. Tax. Non-saving income is 50702. Now, first 37,700, this is the basic rate back. 37,700 into 20%, so it's 7540. Now, how much is remaining? 50702 minus 37,700, so it's 13,002. Basic rate band is done, so now the rate is 40%. So this is 5201. Okay? Then we have dividend income, it's 20,000. First 2,000 goes at 0% bank, so it is zero. And now since the basic rate band is already used, so the remaining dividend, 18,000, this goes in higher rate band, 33.75%, 18,000 into 33.75, so it's 6075. We will add up all of them to arrive at the value of tax liability. 7540-5201-6075. So it's 18,816. We will adjust the tax credit to arrive at the value of tax payable. Now, what was the tax credit? Let's look at it. We grossed up interest in possession from 8,000 to 10,000. So the withholding element was 2,000. We'll adjust it. And in discretionary trust, we grossed it up from 15,000 to 27,272. So we'll just take the difference to identify the withholding tax. So it's 12,272. 2,000 and 12,272. So your tax payable is 4,544. So we haven't studied anything new in this practice question. It is just a revision of what we have already studied. In the previous class, we introduced these concept of trust. Interest in possession trust and discretionary trust. In interest in possession trust, there is 20% withholding. In discretionary trust, there is 45% withholding. We grossed it up. We classified the incomes. We arrived at the value of total income. The personal allowance is adjusted to get the value of taxable income. Then the tax banks, first 37,700 goes at 20%. Here, the non-saving income is 50,000 and remaining goes at 40%. Dividend income, first 2,000 at 0% and remaining at higher rate now. So till now, what we have already studied is we have introduced the concept of non-saving income. We have introduced real estate investment trust. We have introduced dividend income and we have introduced the concept of trust income. This was all which we studied in the previous class. And we did this practice question, which relates to the concept of last class, so that you can have a revision. Okay? I hope that you all are revising through these classrooms. I have attached them in the course attachment in the learning management system. You can print them out and you can review the notes so that you can have a clarity. Is it clear? Now we are starting our today's discussion, and that is on interest income. I want you all to concentrate that what are the rules relating to interest income, because it is classified as a separate head of income as saving income. It has its own tax rates, okay? So let's look at it. Now, 
the interest income is classified under a head of saving income. So what we have discussed is we have discussed non-saving income. Then we introduced the concept of dividend income. And now we are starting discussion on saving income. This is the third head, okay, which we are discussing. We have already discussed at the start of this chapter that in UK taxation, all incomes are divided in three heads. The first one was non-saving income, which is a normal income head. It includes all incomes except interest income because it is classified as saving income and the dividend income, which is classified as a separate. We have already discussed non-saving and dividend. Now we are discussing the concept of saving income, its tax rates I want you all to concentrate on. Okay, now the basic rate band, which is still 37,700. Non-saving income tax rate is 20%. Savings tax rate is also 20%. The dividend tax rate is 8.75%. In higher rate band, non-saving and saving both have 40% rate. Dividend rate is 33.75. In additional rate band, non-saving rate is 45%. Saving income rate is 45%. And dividend income rate is 39.35%. So if you look at it carefully, the tax rates of saving income are same as non-saving. So you must be thinking that why we classify it as a separate head of income. The only difference is that in saving income, there is a 0% tax bank. If you remember, in dividend income also, there is a 0% tax bank of £2,000. In saving income also, there is a 0% tax bank, but it depends on what type of taxpayer you are. If you are a basic rate taxpayer, this 0% bank is of £1,000. If you are a higher rate taxpayer, this 0% tax band is of 500 pounds. If you are an additional rate taxpayer, then you will not get any 0% bank. Okay, listen to me carefully. The interest income which you earn is classified in the head of saving income. The tax rates of saving income are same as non-saving. The only difference is that in non-saving, there is no 0% bank. But in saving income, there is a 0% tax bank of 1,500 and zero amount, depending on which type of taxpayer you are. Okay? Before adding up further rules, I will do two practice questions relating to saving income, and then I'll add up the further rules. Okay? I want you all to concentrate on it don't rush, otherwise you'll get frustrated. Just listen to me with patience and concentration. Each and everything will get you. Okay, let's look at it. Mr. N has following incomes during the year. Employment income, 23,000. Income from DT, 7,000. You all know that discretionary trust is classified as non-saving and withholding tax is 45%. Income from IIP, 7,500. IIP earns from interest income. We have already studied that if IIP earns from non-saving or saving, we classify it as a non-saving income. Listen to me with patience, okay? Don't rush. If you remember the rules of trust income, it is taxed as non-saving income if trust earns from non-saving or saving sources. Withholding tax will be 20%. In IIP, we have studied that if the trust earns from non-saving or saving sources, we classify it in head of non-saving. See, this is income from IIP, the trust. Income from bank interest, this is the saving income. And then we have dividend income, 13,500. Listen to me carefully. Don't rush. Patience and concentration is most important. One head is non-saving. Second is saving. And now the third one is dividend. Okay? 
we are making one more column and that is of total. Why I am making the column of total? The reason being that this will help us to determine that whether we are a basic rate taxpayer, higher rate taxpayer, or additional rate taxpayer. This will affect our 0% band of saving income. Listen to me with patience and concentration. Once we complete the question, things will get clear in your mind. Now, the first income is employment income. It is 23,000. I will put it in column of total and in the subhead, it will go in the head of non-saving. Okay? I am putting every income in the column of total also. Because total is the sum. Okay? So, employment income 23,000 goes in the head of non-saving. And total will include all the amounts. Now, discretionary trust, 7,000. The examiner is signing, so 45% withholding is, is adjusted in it. We need to gross it up. You all know that in discretionary trust, 45% is the withhold. So what we receive is 55%. So this is 12727, and it also goes in the column of non-saving. Listen to me with patience and concentration. Each and everything will get clear. If you will rush, then you will get confused. Okay? Employment income 23,000 goes in non-saving. Discretionary trust 7,000. It is a non-saving income. Withholding tax is 45%. And since examiner is silent, so we will assume it as net. So if 45% is the withhold, what we have received is 55%. Okay, now interest in possession trust, IIT. This is the trust. Trust is earning from interest income. But we have already studied that tax department says that if a trust earns from non-saving or saving sources, we classify it as a non-saving income. The withholding tax is 20%. And since examiner is silent, so we assume it as net. 7,500 divided by 80% since 20% is the withhold multiplied by 100. So this gives us 9,375. I am putting it in column of total and classification is in non saving Then we have bank interest 14,500. Bank interest goes in column of saving income. Everything will be put in total column always. 14,500. And then we have dividend income of 13,500. So this is our dividend. 13,500. Dividend goes in column of dividend. I will repeat each and everything. Just listen to me carefully so that you can understand. Now we'll arrive at the value of total income. Let me repeat it. See, we had employment income 23,000. It goes in non-saving. Discretionary trust always goes in non-saving. We have studied it in the previous class. In discretionary trust, withholding tax is 45%. So we will gross it up. Divided by 55, multiplied by 100. Interest in possession. With old land tax is 20%. It goes in non-saving. Bank interest goes in saving and dividend goes in dividend. Some students will get confused. That, sir, IIP is earning from interest income. So why are you not putting it in saving income? See, we have already studied. That if IIP earns from non-saving or saving sources, we classify it as non-saving and withholding tax is 20%. Okay. Let's add up all of the income to arrive at the value of total income. 23,000, 1, 2, 7, 2, 7, 9, 3, 7, 5, 14, 500, and 13,500. So this is 7, 3, 
सेवन थ्री वन जीरो टू ओके लेट्स एड अप द कॉलम ऑफ नॉन सेविंग सो दिस इज फोर फाइव वन जीरो टू दिस विल बी फोर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड दिस विल बी थर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड ओके यू विल एडजस्ट द पर्सनल अलाउंस now we are adjusting it in column of total see total column is the sum and in the head of income we are adjusting it in non saving please don't get confused that sir why are we claiming personal allowance twice we are not claiming it but twice we have claimed it once only in non saving this is the total column the sum obviously total column will reflect everything so we will have the taxable income taxable income so the taxable income is 73102 minus 12570 so this is 60532 listen to me carefully and the non saving amount is 32532 saving is same 14500 and dividend is same 13500 Now, sir, why did total column C six zero five three two is more than thirty seven thousand seven hundred? So this means that this person is higher rate taxpayer when we look at all the incomes. This will help us to determine the zero percent bank in saving income. 0% rate will apply on 1000 pounds if a person is basic rate taxpayer on 500 pounds if a person is a higher rate taxpayer so here the saving income 0% bank will be of 500 pounds just have patience and listen to me carefully i will repeat each and everything and we'll do more practice also now we are applying the tax the tax is applied on each income separately non saving income 32532 37700 is your basic rate bank so 32532 into 20% this gives me 6506 okay then you have saving income It is fourteen thousand five hundred. Now, in saving income, zero percent bank will be of five hundred pounds because you are higher rate taxpayer on total. You are higher rate taxpayer on total, so five hundred will go at zero percent bank. Okay. Now let's look at our basic rate bank. What is the remaining amount? Thirty-seven thousand seven hundred. The remaining amount in basic rate bank is three zero five three two minus five hundred, so it's six thousand six hundred and sixty eight. Now saving income, basic rate is also at twenty percent, same as non saving. So this gives me one double three four. Okay, now how much saving income is remaining? That will go in the higher rate bank fourteen thousand five hundred minus five hundred and minus six thousand six hundred and sixty eight. So seven double three two. This will be taxed at forty percent. So this gives me two nine three three. And the last income is dividend income. The dividend income amount is thirteen thousand five hundred. You all know that in dividend, first two thousand dividend is irrespective. First two thousand always at zero percent bank. The basic rate bank is already used, so the remaining amount eleven thousand five hundred. It will be taxed at thirty three point seven five percent higher rate of dividend. I will repeat each and everything. so listen to me with patience this gives me tax liability 
This gives me the tax liability. 6506-1334-2933 and 3881. So it's 14654. You will adjust the tax credit the advanced tax to arrive at the value of tax payable. Let's look at the tax credit. We grossed up discretionary trust 7,000 to 12,727 and 7,500 to 9,375. So 12727 minus 7,000. So this is 5,727. And the other credit is 9375 minus 7500. So it's 1875. The withholding tax element, the payable will be 14654 minus 5727 minus 1875. So it's 7052. I will repeat it again. I want you all to listen to me carefully. So that if you have any confusion, that gets clear. Okay? We'll do more and more practice questions to make the things clear. First of all, interest income is classified as a separate head, saving income. Saving and non-saving income has similar tax rates. Saving and non-saving income have similar tax rates. Only difference is the 0% tax. The 0% rate. 1,000 pounds if you are a basic rate taxpayer, 500 pounds if you are a higher rate taxpayer, and nil if you are an additional rate taxpayer. We have discussed the concept still here. Okay? We will look at this portion. Okay? I haven't discussed this portion yet. I've discussed this, and now we are doing some practice so that things get clear, and then we'll add up more concepts in it. Now, Employment income 23,000 goes in non saving. Discretionary plus 7,000. You gross it up, 45% is withholding. So divided by 55, multiplied by 100. We gross it up, 12727. Interest in possession, withholding is 20%. We gross it up, divided by 80, multiplied by 100. Bank interest goes in saving and dividend goes in dividend. The total income is calculated. Personal allowance and taxable. One new thing which we did is we used to make this classification, but today in this question, we made column of total also. Why? Because we have to look that whether we are a higher rate taxpayer, a basic rate taxpayer, or an additional rate taxpayer at the total level. This helps us in determining this 0% bank. Non-saving income, basic rate bank. See, the incomes are taxed, not the total column. We are taxing each income separately. Non-saving income at 20%. Saving income, first 500 goes at 0%. Look at the basic rate bank. Remaining portion goes at 20%. First 500, basic rate bank and the excess. Then we have dividend income, 2000 and the remaining. Okay. See, maybe you are feeling that things are getting complex. How will I do this? I will only say one thing. This is your third class of advanced taxation, the third class. It's a long course. We have just started the thing. It's a new world. With practice, with patience, each and everything will get clear. But if you will rush, you will hurry. What will happen is you will get frustrated and you say, oh, I can't do it. No, it's very basic. It's very simple. This is basic knowledge which you study on skills level taxation also. But since you are disconnected with taxation since a long time, that's why it is appearing to be difficult. But don't worry. With practice, each and everything will get. Okay? Let's look at one more practice question. Let's look at it. 
Now, Mr. N has following incomes during the year. Pension income, 16,500. Income from DP, 9,000. Trading income, 25,500. Income from bank interest, 16,500. And dividend income, 10,000. Okay, let's look at it. First column is of total, then non-saving, saving, and dividend. Okay, I want you all to concentrate on it. Listen to me carefully. Pension income. Pension income is non-saving. I'll put it in column of total, and classification is non-saving. Okay. Non-saving, saving dividend is the classification. Discretionary trust. The examiner is silent, so it is net. Withholding tax is 45%, the advanced tax. So let me gross it up. Divided by 55%, multiplied by 100%. 9,000 divided by 55, multiplied by 100. So it's one six three six four goes in non-saving. Is it clear? Then we have trading income. Trading income goes in non-saving. Twenty five thousand five hundred. This goes in non-saving yet. Okay. Then we have bank interest. 16,500 will go in column of saving income. Interest is saving income. You know that. And then we have dividend income. Dividend goes in column of dividend. I'm putting each and everything in column of total also. Because total reflects the sum. So if you look at it, I haven't done anything difficult. Pension income, non-saving. Discretionary trust, grossed up and goes in non-saving. Trading income, bank interest is saving and dividend is dividend. Is it clear? Please confirm. Okay? Now, let's add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. Total income. Now. 16,500, 16,364, 25,500, 16,500, and 10,000. So it's 84, 864. Okay, this is our column of total. Now let's update the sub columns 16,500, 16,364, and 25,500. So it's 58364. It is 16,500 and this is 10,000. We will adjust the personal allowance. Now we'll update the column of total 12570. And in the income heads, it is adjusted in non saving. So this gives us the value of taxable income. Taxable income. 84864 minus 12570, 72,294. 58364 minus 12570. So this is 45794, 16,500, and this is 10,000. Okay, let me repeat it again. I want you all to concentrate on it. Pension, non-saving goes in non-saving. Discretionary trust, gross up amount goes in non-saving. Trading income, bank interest goes in saving and dividend goes in dividend. Total income. We are updating the total column and side by side we are updating the sub columns also. Personal allowance is adjusted to arrive at taxable. On the total, I am a higher rate taxpayer. This helps us to determine 
the 0% tax ban of saving income. Okay. Now let's apply the tax. When we apply the tax, always remember that tax is on each income head. 45794. First, Basic rate ban, 37,700, 20%. So this is 7540. The remaining portion, 45794 minus 37,700. It's 8094. Higher rate, 40%. So this gives us 3238. I will repeat it again. 45794, basic rate band 20%. Remaining portion goes in higher rate band. Is it clear? Let's look at saving income. The saving income amount is 16,500. Since we are a higher rate taxpayer on total, so 500 at 0 percent, this gives us 0, and the remaining 16,000. The basic rate band is used. So now we are a higher rate taxpayer. Once the basic rate band is used, so now everything is going in higher rate. 6,400. Then we have dividend, which is 10,000. In dividend, first 2,000. Always at 0%. It's 0. And the remaining dividend, 8,000. 33.75 because the basic rate band is already used. 33.75. So it's 2700. Okay. We will add up all of them to arrive at the value of tax liability. 7540, we will adjust the tax credit from it to arrive at the value of tax payable. Okay. The tax credit is we grossed up discretionary trust from 9,000 to 16,364. So the difference amount was our credit, which is 73. Six four. Our tax payable will be if I take the difference, it's one two five one four. Let me repeat it again for you people, but I believe that it is getting simple with practice. Things will get simple, simple, and you'll be able to understand it in more and more better manner. Pension income goes in non-saving. Discretionary trust goes in non-saving. We gross it up because there is 45% withhold. Trading income goes in non-saving. Bank interest goes in saving income. Dividend goes in column of dividend. Add up all of them to arrive at total income. We adjust personal allowance to arrive at taxable income. The total column shows that at the total level, we'll be a higher rate taxpayer. Now, this higher rate taxpayer helps determine us this 0% band of saving income. Is it clear? Now, non-saving income, first 37,750%, it uses up the basic rate band, remaining portion at higher rate band. Saving income, first 500 is done, remaining at higher rate because the basic rate band is used. And same for dividend. First 2,000 at zero, and remaining at higher rate back. I believe that by now, the things must be getting clear in your mind. The tax rates of saving income are same as non-saving. The only difference 
is the 0% tax rate. Clear? I want you all to try this practice question on your own. Pause the recording and try this practice question on your own and then we'll do and then we will add some more concepts relating to saving income. Okay, so let's look at this practice question. I want you all to pause the recording and try this on your own first. Okay. Mr. N is falling incomes during the year. Property income 27,000. Income from IIP 18,000. The trust is earning from interest income. We have already discussed this, that if a trust earns from non-saving or saving sources, we classify it as a non-saving income. See, please don't get confused. Many students get confused. They say that, sir, why are you not putting it in saving income? This is not your interest income. The trust is earning from interest income. For the beneficiary, if the trust earns from non-saving or saving source, we classify it as a non-saving income. Withholding tax is 20%. And since the examiner is silent, we assume that the amount is net. This is your bank income, 29,000, and dividend income, 7,000. Let's look at it carefully. First column we'll make of total, then non saving, saving, and dividend. Okay, let's look at it. I want you all to concentrate. Property income is 27,000. We will put in column of total and the classification is in non-saving because property income is a non-saving income. Then we have interest in possession trust, 18,000. Okay, we will gross it up, divide it by 80%, multiplied by 100%. So the gross amount is 18,000 divided by 80 multiplied by 100. So it's 22,500. We will put it in column of non-saving. Then we have bank interest 29,000. The interest income. Interest income goes in column of saving. 29,000. Okay. And then we have dividend income, and that is 7,000. Dividend goes in column of dividend. Everything is reflected in column of total, and then the subclassifications are done. Okay, listen to me carefully so that you can understand it. We will add up all of the incomes to arrive at the value of total income. 27,000 plus 22,500, plus 29,000, plus 7,000. So this gives us 85,500. Non-saving total is 49,500. Saving is 29,000. And dividend is 7,000. Okay. We will adjust the personal allowance to arrive at the value of taxable income. 12570, it will be adjusted in column of non-saving income to arrive at the value of taxable income. Okay, so our taxable income will be 85500 minus 12570, so this is 72930, Non-saving column will fall to 12570. So this is now 36930. This is 29,000 and dividend is 7,000. Okay. The total taxable income column shows that we are a higher rate taxpayer at total. We are a higher rate taxpayer. We are a higher rate taxpayer because the total taxable income exceeds the basic rate band limit of 37.7. Let me repeat it again. Property income goes in non-saving. IIP is grossed up, classified in non-saving. 
interest income goes in saving and dividend goes in the column of dividend. Okay, so all the incomes are classified in their respective heads. Okay, now, now we'll start applying the text. I want you all to concentrate on it. Text is on each head of income. Non-saving income is 36930. The basic rate band is still 37,700. 36930 into 20%. So this gives us 7386, okay? Entire amount 36930 lies in the basic rate band. Your basic rate band is still 37,700. Now we have saving income and this is 29,000. Since we are a higher rate taxpayer on total, 500 pounds will go at 0%. So this gives us zero. Now let's look at the basic rate band. Our basic rate band is of 37,700. What is the remaining amount in basic rate band? 37,700 minus 36,930 minus 500. So the remaining amount is 270. The basic rate of saving income is 20%. So 217 to 20% is 54. Now the remaining amount in saving income is 29,000 minus 500 minus 270. So it's 28230. Saving income at higher rate is of 40%. So 40% tax rate, 11292. Okay, let me repeat it again if you have any query. Non-saving income, 20% basic rate band, 37,700. Then we have saving income, first 500 at 0% since we are a higher rate taxpayer. Then we looked at the basic rate band. The balancing amount is 270 at 20%. The remaining amount in saving income is taxed at Higher rate band, because once the basic rate band is used, now you fall at higher rate band. And then we have the dividend income, that is 7,000. First 2,000 at 0%. First 2,000 at 0%, this gives us zero. And the remaining dividend, 5,000, will be taxed at higher rate band, because the basic rate band is 33.75 percent, 5,000 33.75 percent, so it's 1688. We will add up all of them to arrive at the value of tax liability. 7386, 54, 11292, and 1688. This gives us 20. Four two zero. We'll adjust the tax credit, the advanced tax from it, to arrive at the value of tax payable. Okay. Now, what is the tax credit? If you look at it carefully, we grossed up interest in possession trust from eighteen thousand to twenty two thousand four five hundred. So forty five hundred is the withholding. You will adjust it so your tax payable will be 15920. So if you look at it carefully, what we have done here is we classified the incomes, property income, IIP, interest income, dividend income. We classified the incomes, we added up all of them to arrive at total income. Then we adjusted the personal allowance to get the taxable income. Non-saving income. First 37,700 goes at 20%, but since it's 36930, it lies within basic rate band. Then we have saving income, first 500 at 0% because we are a higher rate taxpayer. And then the remaining portion, 270 at 20%. Remaining saving income goes at higher rate band, double one, 292. 
Dividend income, first 2,000 at 0%, remaining at higher rate band, 33.75. Add up all of them to arrive at tax liability. The withholding tax is adjusted to arrive at the value of tax payable. So again, it is one of the routine question and nothing new was discussed in it. So if you look at it, saving income, it includes the interest income, saving income. Its tax rates are same as non-saving. The only difference is the 0% tax ban concept. Is it clear? Now let's add further rules relating to saving income. Now listen to me carefully so you'll be able to understand the rules. Saving income will be taxed at 0% rate if it lies in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income. This is in addition to existing 0% ban. In saving income, there is one more 0% rate concept. Listen to me carefully. In saving income, there is one more 0% concept. And that is in addition to existing 0% bans. These are your existing 0% bans. In addition to this, if saving income lies in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income, then it will be taxed at 0% up till first 5,000 of taxable income. Now, what do you mean by this? See, here our non-saving income was 32532. So it occupied the first 5,000 pounds. If you have zero non-saving income, if your non-saving taxable income would be zero, the saving income would have got the space in first 5,000 of the taxable income. Listen to me carefully. We'll do the practice question. Things will get crystal clear. But while studying the rule, listen to me carefully. Saving income will get one more concept of 0%. But that is available if saving income lies in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income. If saving income lies in first 5,000 of taxable income. Now, how is it possible? How is it possible that saving income lies in first 5,000 of taxable income? This happens... When you have no non-saving income, your non-saving income is zero, or if it is less than 5,000. If you have no non-saving, or if it is less than 5,000 pounds. In that case, saving income may get space in first 5,000 pounds. I'll repeat it again. See, first non-saving income is taxed. If your non-saving income is zero, at taxable income level, if it is zero, or if it is less than 5,000, then it is possible that saving income may get space in first 5,000 pounds. Saving income may get space in first 5,000 pounds. And if saving income will get space in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income, in that case, in that situation, Saving income will be taxed at 0% up till the first 5,000 pounds of taxable. Okay. Now, this rule will get more clear while we'll be doing the practice question. Then, interest income earned on national saving certificates. These are government bonds and individual saving account. This is also a saving account. It is exempted from income tax. Basically, if a person wants to earn interest, he can put the funds in a commercial bank, the normal banks, or he can also deposit in the government bonds, the national saving certificates or individual saving account. In that case, if he's getting interest income from the government, that interest income will be exempted from income tax. The basic idea behind this rule is to encourage people to keep their deposits with the government. No deposit limit in national saving certificate. In individual saving account, investment limit is 20,000 pounds. In individual saving account, you cannot put more than 20,000 pounds. In national saving certificate, you can keep as many deposits as you want. 
the government will be giving you the interest income and on that interest income, there will be no income tax. Okay. And one last rule. Normally, there is no withholding tax on interest income. There is no advance tax. Only exception is that if you are getting interest income from unlisted company. Now, why a company will pay me an interest? If I have their loan notes. If you are getting interest income from loan notes of unlisted company, then withholding tax is 20%. Okay, so we introduce these three new rules. Number one, saving income will get additional 0% band of 5,000 pounds if it lies in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income. This is in addition to normal 0%. Second, interest income from national saving certificates and individual saving account is exempt from income. In national saving certificate, you can keep unlimited deposits. In individual saving account, the max limit is £20,000. These are the government bonds, like government deposits. For example, if I have some savings and I want to keep it uh, for interest income, I can keep it with a commercial bank or I can keep it in government bonds or individual saving account. One last thing, there is no withholding tax on interest income. But if we are getting interest income from unlisted company, then the withholding tax of 20% will apply. Okay. Now let's look at the practice questions for the last three rules which we have studied. Once we'll do the practice question, each and everything will get clear. Let's look at it. Mr. N is following incomes during the year. Pension income 17,000. Income from DT. 5,000. It goes in non-saving. Withholding tax is 45%. And the amount which we receive is net. Interest income from national saving certificate, it is exempt. No tax on it. Normal bank interest, 32,000. And dividend income, 19,000. I want you all to listen to me carefully. It's not difficult. First column is of total, then non-saving, then saving, and dividend. Okay? Now, pension income. It goes in column of total, and in the subhead, it will be adjusted in non-saving. Pension income, 17,000. Discretionary trust. 5,000, 45% is the withhold. So divided by 55, multiplied by 100. 5,000 divided by 55, multiplied by 100. 9091 goes in head of non -sit. National saving. Certificate, exempt, no tax. National saving certificate, exempt, no tax. No need to show in any column because it's exempt. There is no tax. Bank interest, 32,000. Updated in column of total and in saving, 32,000. Then we have dividend, 19,000. Updated in column of total and in head of dividend. I will repeat it again. I want you all to listen to me carefully. Pension income, 17,000 goes in non-saving. Discretionary trust, we gross it up, goes in non-saving. National saving certificate is exempt. Bank interest goes in saving and dividend goes in dividend. Is it clear? That simple classification. Only new thing was national saving certificate, which is exempt. Let's add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. 17,000, 9091, 32,000 and 19,000. So the total column shows 77,091, 
non saving 17000 plus 9091 it's 26091 this is 32000 and this is 19000 okay we will adjust personal allowance the personal allowance is 12570 to arrive at the value of taxable income Okay, now what will be the taxable income? Let's look at it. I believe that by now you must be confident on these all workings. 64521 shows the total column and the subheads. 12570, so it's 13521, 32,000, and this is 19,000. Clear? Now, on the total, the person is higher rate taxpayer. So the saving income zero person bank will be of 500 pounds. Let's apply tax on it. Non-saving income. 13521. This lies in basic rate bank. 20%. 1, 3, 5, 2, 1 into 20%. It's 2704. Saving income, 32,000. Let's look at the basic rate back. Okay. But first, since he's a higher rate taxpayer, so 500 goes at 0%. And now we'll look at the basic rate back. 37,700, the remaining gap is 37,700 minus 13521 minus 500. So it's 23,679 basic rate. So the tax rate will be 20%. 20%, so this can give us 4736. Okay, so the basic rate band is 37,700, 13521 minus and 500. So the remaining gap is 23,679. Now, what is your remaining saving income? 32,000 minus 500 minus 23,679. The remaining gap is 7,821. Higher rate, 40%. 3,1. Two eight, okay, and then we have the dividend income. So it's nineteen thousand. First two thousand always go at zero percent. So this gives us zero. The basic rate band is thirty seven seven hundred. Seventeen thousand goes at higher rate band thirty three point seven five. So this gives us 5738. We add up all of them to arrive at the value of tax liability 2704, 4736, 3128, and 5738. So it's 16306. We'll adjust tax credit from it to arrive at the value of tax payable. Now, tax payable. Now, what was the tax credit? If you look at it, we grossed up discretionary trust from 5,000 to 909. So the credit was 4091 and tax payable will be 12215. Okay, let's look at it. First of all, we classified the incomes in relevant debt. Pension goes in non-saving. Discretionary trust goes in non-saving. National saving certificate is simply exempt. Bank interest goes in saving. Dividend goes in dividend. We classified the incomes in relevant. We added up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. 
personal allowance is adjusted to arrive at taxable. 13521, 20%, it's 2704. Saving income. Since we are a higher rate taxpayer, so first 500 at 0%, and the remaining portion goes at 20%. Now, the remaining saving income will be at higher rate band since once the band is used, and then we have dividend. So we have done all of this multiple times in the previous question. This was our 15th practice question. Only thing new was this national saving certificate. So what I've been trying to say from the very much start is practice. When you do things again and again, again and again, the steps, the procedures, will be familiarized. Okay, let's look at two more practice questions and then we'll sum up our today's class so that your saving income concept gets crystal clear. Okay, let's look at these two practice questions and then we'll wind up our today's class. Okay, so Mr. N has following incomes during the year. Trading income, 7,000. Income from IIP, 2,000. Now, since the examiner is silent, so we will assume it as non-saving and withholding tax will be 20%. Okay? Now, interest income from individual saving account, 3,000. It is exempt. Bank interest, 25,000. And dividend income is 19,000. Let's look at it. Again, a routine question. We will make the columns. The first column is total, then non-saving, saving, and dividend. Okay? Look at it carefully so that you can understand the concept. Now, trading income. Trading income is 7,000. It will go in the column of total and will be classified as a non-saving income. Then we have interest in possession trust, 2,000. The examiner is silent, so the amount is net. We need to gross it up. Divided by 80% multiplied by 100%. So the gross amount will be 2,500. It will go in column of non-saving. Then we have individual saving account. Individual saving account interest income is exempt. So it will not be shown in any of the column. Then we have bank interest. The bank interest is 25,000. It will go in the column of saving. And then we have dividend income that is 19,000. So dividend will go in the column of dividend. First the total and then in the column of dividend. So I believe we are not doing anything new or difficult in this question. Simple classification of income. We will add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. 7,000 plus 2,500 plus 25,000 plus 19,000. So this gives us 53,500. Non-saving total is 9,500. This is 25,000 and dividend is 19,000. Now we'll adjust the personal allowance. The personal allowance is 12570. I will adjust the total column. And in income heads, first we will adjust the non saving. But since non saving income is 9500 only, so the remaining personal allowance, 12570 minus 9500. So the remaining personal allowance is 3070. The total personal allowance is 12570. 9500 is adjusted. The remaining amount is 3070. So 25,000 minus 3070. So it's 21930. And then we have dividend income. 
the total column reflects 40930 and this is our taxable income let me repeat it again for you people so that you can understand in a better manner what we have done till now is trading income 7000 goes in non saving IIP examiner is silent, so it will go in non-saving. Withholding tax is 20%, so we glossed it up. Individual saving account is exempt. Bank interest goes in saving. Dividend goes in column of dividend. We added up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. Personal allowance is 12570. Non-saving, 9500. And the remaining element goes in saving income. Now we get the taxable income. Is it clear? The personal allowance is 12570. First, we offset the non saving. The remaining allowance goes for saving income. Then. Now we are calculating the tax. But let's look at it here. You are a higher rate taxpayer in total. Okay. This determination is done for 0% band of saving income. You all know that. Now let's apply the tax. Non-saving income is zero. So obviously tax on zero will be zero. There is no need to calculate the amount. Saving income, 21930. Now here you want to listen to me carefully. Now since non-saving income is zero, the rule which we study, first 5,000 pounds will get taxed at 0% bank. Do you remember this rule? Let's read it again. Let's read this rule. Saving income will be taxed at 0% if it lies in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income. See, your non-saving income is zero. Your non-saving income in this question is zero. So saving income will get space in first 5,000. Now the normal 0% bank is of 500. So 500 also gets taxed at 0% because you are higher rate taxpayer and the remaining saving income. 21930 minus 5,000 minus 500. So it's 16430 Basic rate band, 20%. So this is 3286. I will repeat it again. See, the non-saving income was zero. Saving income. First 5,000 goes at 0%. Why is it so? If your non-saving income is zero, the saving income will get space in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income. Saving income will get space in first 5,000 pounds of taxable income. Now you are a higher rate taxpayer, so 500 pounds, 0% bank. This is the normal 0% bank. It is available as it is. And the remaining saving income will be taxed at 20%. Now let's look at dividend income. Dividend is 19,000. First 2,000 will be taxed at 0%. So this is zero. Now let's look at your basic rate band. Your basic rate band is 37,700. So the remaining space in band is 37,700 minus 5,000 minus 500 minus 16430 and minus 2,000. So it's 13770. Now in basic rate band, the dividend is taxed at 8.75%. So this is 1205. Now, what is the remaining dividend value? 19,000 minus 2,000 minus 13770. So remaining dividend is 3230, 33.75%. So this gives us. 1090. If I add up all of them, this gives me tax liability 
3286-1205-1090. So this is 5,581. We'll adjust the tax credit in it. And we'll arrive at the value of tax payable. Now, what is the tax credit if we look at it? We grossed up IIP from 2000 to 2500. So the tax credit is 500. You'll adjust it. So your tax payable will be 5081. Let me repeat it again for you people. I want you all to concentrate on it. Trading income 7000 goes in non saving. IIP is grossed up, goes in non-saving. Individual saving account is exempt. Bank interest goes in saving. Dividend goes in dividend. We add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. Personal allowance is 12570, 9500 in non-saving and remaining in the saving end. We adjust it to arrive at the value of taxable income. Now, non-saving, zero. Saving income gets space in first $5,000. Listen to me carefully. Saving income gets space in first $5,000 because your non-saving has fallen to zero. Normal zero person band of saving income, 500 pounds, and then the remaining saving income. Okay. And then we tax the dividend income according to the basic rate band. So, see, this is again a bunch of questions which are in which we are doing repeat, repeat. We are revising the rules. We are looking at new concepts and it's it will, with passage of time and with practice, it will become just steps which you need to remember. Okay. One last practice question. I want you all to pause the recording Try it on your own and then resume the recording and review it with me. Okay. I'm doing it on the go, but I want you all to pause it and first try it on your own. Mr. N is following incomes during the year. Employment income 4,000. Income from real estate investment trust. It's a non-saving income and withholding tax is 20%. I hope you all remember. Interest income 40,000 and dividend income is 12,000. Okay, let's start the question. First column is total, then non saving, then saving, and the last column will be dividend. Okay, let's look at it. Employment income. 4,000 goes in column of total and in classification, we will put it in non-saving. Income from real estate investment trust, 3,000, you will gross it up, divided by 80%, multiplied by 100%. In read, withholding tax is 20%. Since the examiner is silent, so we'll assume that the amount is net. We need to gross it up. 3750 goes in the head of non saving. Interest income simply goes in saving income 40,000. Here is it in saving income. And then we have dividend income 12,000 goes in the head of dividend. Okay. So we have classified all the income, employment in non-saving, REIT in non-saving, interest in saving, and dividend goes in the column of dividend. We'll add up all of them to arrive at the value of total income. Okay. Let's look at it carefully so that you people can understand it. 4,000 plus 3,750 plus 40,000 and then 12,000. So it's 59750. Non-saving head is 7750. Saving is 40,000. 
and dividend is 12,000. We'll adjust personal allowance. Your personal allowance is 12570. Now, first of all, we hit the non saving. But since the non-saving income is just 7750, so it has fallen to zero. The remaining allowance, 12570 minus 7750. The remaining allowance will be adjusted from saving income. Obviously, we'll not waste our personal allowance. We will shift it to the next column. So the saving income, taxable income is 35180. And this is the dividend. So this gives us the taxable income. I believe that this is not difficult. It's routine work. 47180 is our taxable income. This shows that we are a higher rate tax payer. Okay. Now, let's charge tax on it. Non-saving income is zero. So obviously no tax on it. Then we have saving income. Now since non-saving is zero, so saving will get space in first 5,000. Like if your non-saving would be 1,000, then saving would have got 4,000 in first 5,000. Whatever amount it gets in first 5,000 will be taxed at zero percent. You are a higher rate taxpayer. So 500 pounds goes at 0%, the normal 0% back, and the remaining saving income. Since it's 35180, so the remaining amount is 29680. 20% is the tax. So it's 5936. Okay. Now you'll put up the dividend income, 12,000. First 2,000 goes at 0%. So this is zero. And now let's look at the basic rate band, which must be ending by now, 37,700. If there is any remaining amount in basic rate band, Minus 5,000, minus 500, minus 29680, and minus 2,000. So 520 is remaining in basic rate band. It will be taxed at 8.75%. So this gives us 46. And the remaining dividend income. 12,000 minus 2,000 minus 520. 9480, higher rate 33.75. So this is 3200. Okay, let's add up all of them to arrive at the value of tax liability 5936, 46, and 3200. So it's 9182. We'll adjust the tax credit to arrive at the value of tax payable. Okay, now what was the tax credit? We crossed read from 3000 to 3750, so the credit was 750. Our payable will be 84. Three, two. Okay, I'll repeat it again. I want you all to concentrate on it. Employment income 4,000 goes in non saving. Real estate investment trust, we grossed it up, it's 3,750. Interest income goes in saving, and dividend goes in the column of dividend. We added up all of them to arrive at total income. We adjusted the personal allowance to arrive at taxable income. As non-saving was zero, so saving income got first 5,000 at zero percent bank. He's a higher rate to expire, so 500 more at zero percent, and then the remaining saving income at 
because we are still in basic rate band. Dividend income first 2000, remaining portion in the basic rate band and the last amount of dividend, which was left over, it goes in higher rate band. So if I sum up my today's class, we started our discussion with saving income, the main concept of today. Primarily, we started with the concept of trust, which we have studied in the previous class. We did one practice question to revise it. And then we introduced our today's main concept that was saving income. The tax rates of saving and non-saving are same. We looked at the 0% banks. For basic rate taxpayer, it's 1,000. For higher rate taxpayer, it's 500. For additional rate taxpayer, it's zero. Then we looked at the 5,000 bank, 0% bank. We looked at exempt saving income national saving certificate and individual saving account. And the last thing was withholding tax on saving income is zero. We always take bank interest as a whole. We don't gross up interest income. You can look in every question, but if it is interest income from unlisted company, there will be 20% withhold. Do revise all the questions. If you have any query, feel free to ask. Okay, in the next class, we'll revise it first, and then we'll add up further concepts. Thank you, everyone.